Welcome to episode three of the Data Strategy Show. On today's episode, we've got a brilliant guest in Scott Taylor, known as the Data Whisperer. Scott's a globally recognized thought leader and a consultant on the strategic value of proper data management. As principal of Meta Meta Consulting, he provides data evangelism as a service to help enterprises and tech brands tell their data story by focusing on the why of business alignment rather than the how of technical implementation. Scott lives in Bridgeport, where he often is seen kayaking in the Black Rock Harbour. He can also juggle pins and blow a square bubble. My name's Samir Sharma. Join me on today's episode and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much for being on the show, Scott Taylor, the data whisperer. Oh, I should say that really, <laughs> really, really softly, shouldn't I? <laughs> Look, you know, I, 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 it's, it's great to have you, Scott. And uh, I, I think we've connected, oh, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago, perhaps, on, on, as everyone does these days on LinkedIn. Right. Um, so listen, um, you know, the Data Strategy Show, uh, it's, it's, it's all about an understanding how data is used in business. And I think that's what you and I are about. So what I like to do is to start off with, tell me a little bit about Scott Taylor and the man who's dressed in this white suit. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. The man in white hair. Yeah. So first of all, yeah. Samir, thanks for having me on the show. It's I know pleasure. I sort of badgered you to make sure I'm on there, <laughs> but I saw data strategy. <laughs> like that's my, that's my space. So uh, Scott Taylor, the data whisperer, I help calm data down. That's Great. where that moniker comes from. Yep. So representing yep. the data management side mm -hmm. of the data space, mm -hmm. what I call the truth side. Yep. I look hence at the analytics. Hat. Hence, hence the hat. Hence the hat. That's hat. the yep. man there. Yep. And uh, I look at the analytics side as the meaning side. So truth and meaning. You yep. want both, but you need yep. truth before meaning. You need data management before mm. business intelligence. That's mm -hmm. one of my you mm -hmm. know, bumper sticker phrases there for sure. sure. Yeah. But been in the data space for, I don't know, a couple of decades and came at it from selling data management services to global enterprises in the form of master data content, which is okay. a little niche there. Yep. yep. And worked for Dun & Bradstreet, worked for Nielsen, uh, consulted for Kantar and WPP, mm -hmm. worked for a whole host of uh, startups and so on, but always centered around kind of the structured data deliverable. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. because of that, you got to be really good at telling stories, which yeah. is my space today because Agreed. when you sell content, especially master data content, there's nothing to demo. So you've got to be able to you get people's imagination, kind of connect yeah. with their hearts and minds. Yeah. So. yeah. So it, it, it yeah. sounds like a real sort of media background that you've had, Kantar, Nielsen, you know, WPP. These are all big, huge, um, monolithic uh, media, media companies. What was the, you know, you, you talked about and, and focused on master data. For the listeners, maybe some of them don't know what it is. Why didn't you give us a quick explanation? Simple, because I know you're a simple guy, explanations. Um, what is master data? Sure. So master data, if you don't know what it is, it's your most important data. So just start there. <laughs> Master data, reference data, metadata, the foundational data about your relationships yep. and about your brands, the two most important domains in your business. At its essence, it's just a big fancy list of all the things you interact with, customers, vendors, partners, prospects, the things you make, Mm -hmm. product services offerings, your assets, your people, citizens, patients. So I look at it when I describe it to my family, it's just a big fancy list of things. Yeah. The nouns of the business yeah. is a good yeah. way to think The, the so, core drivers of a business. That's, yeah. that's the, yeah. You know, I mean, you know if you have a customer, yeah. you have a customer that's record. Correct. Yeah. And so it's the basic yeah. information about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so from that perspective then, and from your background in all of these areas, what have you seen that are the, the challenges that a lot of organizations are facing today? Because you talk about foundational data, as do I. It's the core of what we should do before we get to, you know, and I was speaking to somebody yesterday about hindsight, insight, and foresight, you know, which is the way I like, it's a really nice continuum um, that they laid it out on. Um, so, you know, where are some of those challenges that you see with companies uh, today and probably yesteryear as well, because we're probably dealing with the same issues over and over again? 
So where, where do you see those issues stemming from? Who, who's responsible? How have they come about? So a lot of questions in there, but I see part of the challenge is people focus mostly on where data ends up. Yep. Analytics, dashboards, insight. That's obviously important. That's where the value comes from in terms of execution and operationalizing, productionizing things. I'm at the side where I'm where data starts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you don't start the correct way, you're not going to end up where you want to go. Yep. And so if you have a really fancy customer experience you're trying to transform, you got to focus on, okay, so what is a customer? Do we have the right hierarchy? Do we have the segmentation? Do we have the geography correct? Do we have duplicates? Do we have, we got the foundation set first. Yep. Yep. And the reason it's called a foundation isn't just some sort of, you know, ridiculous metaphor. You build on top of it. Yeah. So you've got to make sure that that foundational stuff is right. And to your point, that is a problem as old as data itself, and yeah. it is not going yeah. away. You've got to get the piece parts right about your business, relationships so, and brands yeah. in particular, so, before you go off on all this other cool, sexy stuff that everybody's So Let me just... Um, uh, yeah, and I, I, I think the cool, sexy stuff you're talking about is what everybody's talking about today, AI and so on, you know. And you and I know that AI is, is only driven by the, the, the data that it's provided and it learns on that, you know, data set and it drives meaning from that data. So if you don't have the right base data, you're going to have a pretty bad algorithm and an output at the end of the day. So yeah. you know, it, it's having... You, know, you put garbage into AI, uh, you get AS. Yes. Artificial stupidity <laughs> yeah. is the way I look at it. So. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the opposite of, yeah, absolutely, you know, where, where yeah. we're going with intelligence. But um, so I want to unpick something you've just mentioned and you've, you, you, you just talked about, relationships and brands. Let's talk about that now. You, that's that's your, been your narrative very recently uh, as far as yeah. what I've sort of seen um, on your posts and, and, and podcasts and so on. But just, uh, you know, what, what is that about? And explain to the viewers, what, what is the difference between these things and why, why, are, you, why are you pushing that as a way of, of companies to understand it? Sure, I'm glad you noticed because I, really, I am really pushing that yeah. and that's been the core yeah. to a lot of what I've been talking about and very yeah. recently because I just mm. came mm. up with kind of how to word it. So I spend my time boiling stuff down. Like, how do you get to the essence? How yeah. do you get to like yeah. the atomic level mm -hmm. where things are really clear mm -hmm. and also are extensible across all business? Yeah. So the work I do is trying to be, you know, bring horizontal understanding regardless of what vertical you're in. That's sure. why those terms sure. come up. Yeah, yeah. So what I struck upon was, okay, what's the essence of every business? Every business is trying to deliver value. Mm -hmm to their relationships, mm -hmm. through their brands, at scale. Yep. So I tried to, you know, how, what's the fewest number of words you can use is kind of my <laughs> exercise there. So looking at that, you go relationships. Every business has a relationship. If they don't have relationships, they don't have a business. Mm -hmm. Those relationships mm -hmm. are customer, vendor, partner, prospect, sure. right? Citizen, patient, whatever you call them, depend, client, consumer, yeah. but yeah. they're relationships. Mm -hmm. And what you do as a business is you provide value to those relationships through your brands, yeah. through your offerings, yep. through your products, yep. through your services, through whatever you do to go to market. Mm -hmm. And you have to make whatever the brand is made up of through ingredients, materials, and all the rest of it. Those are all classic. Everything I just listed are classic master data mm -hmm. domain. Mm -hmm. That aside, you go, okay, you want to do that. And at scale is the kicker. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. You've been, you know, companies have been delivering value to relationships through their brands since uh, for, for years. You know, cavemen yeah. were swapping uh, stuff. They might not have had yeah. it branded. But if you want to do it at scale, it takes technology. And technology requires data. And the better that data is, the better the technology will perform. Yeah. So I try and take the intention of a company whatever they are, mm -hmm. who are their relationships, mm -hmm. what are their brands, mm -hmm. peel that back and say, you want to work with them and deliver value at scale? What data do you have to back that up? Yep. Yep. And it, for yep. me, it goes directly right into, okay, how's your customer master? It sure. probably sucks. How's yep. your product master? You've got 12 of them and they're not fully populated. Mm -hmm. And so you get mm -hmm. into the thick of mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. what you need to solve tactically. Yeah. And the purpose of all that is to, close the gap between where a company's going 
and the value data management brings mm -hmm. to it, which mm -hmm. is a gap that's just, you know, got to yes. get close, but it's yeah. very wide if you talk to the data management leadership. Of course. There. They struggle course. with that. Yeah. So, yeah, that's where that all came from. So, so I think what I'm getting from from that is in terms of the relationships and the brands is something that we, you know, and you talk and you touched up, uh, upon it with the technology piece. So technology can only be good if the data because the essence of any kind of system is what we drive is the output, which is the data piece. So a lot of the time I find and it's, it's something that we engaged on in one, one of my posts, um, maybe last week or, or this week, I can't remember around business processes. So the fundamental, so I, I always see that the, the thing around modeling a business is modeling the processes. And as soon as you start to model the processes, you model the data, you know, and you start to build the foundations from two ways. One is the sort of the element of how the business operates and where that's going. And the other is how you're modeling that from maybe a conceptual model or whatever it might be. And then all of the entities, as you say, your master data, those, those entities like customer, you know, uh, product and, and supplier and so on. So, you know, what is the, what is the, the, the current, and you talk about scale, which is really important here because without scale, without having those foundations, your systems and technology are going to be so poor and the output is going to be useless. Into, and we're seeing that time and time again. And, I, and I, I think from a historical perspective, I'd like to get your understanding, what has changed in the data management space? What has changed from it's ERP through to CRM through to where we are now? What has changed fundamentally? Anything? The urgency. Right. The stakes have changed. Yeah. I think yeah. the fundamental principles are as strong as ever. Yep. Because they're applicable to the challenges people have today, mm -hmm. the value of them mm -hmm. is higher. Mm -hmm. The need for them is greater yeah. because the stakes have changed. So if you yes. look at classic disruptive activity, and again, my kind of focus is how do you not make it totally generic, but make these kinds of topics relevant regardless of what business you're in. So if you look at kind of the classic disruptive activity, a lot of it comes from people being able to master and manage and build a data foundation in a space where others couldn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Amazon, great example, a lot of things they do, but one thing they have for sure is really highly structured data about their Absolutely. product. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and a little trivial, you know, trivia point there is if you look at any product page on Amazon, you will find a little code called an ASIN which is the Amazon unique identifier yep. for, that for that particular product. Yep. Yep. So if they didn't have that, I'm sure behind it, I haven't been inside Amazon, but I can tell from looking on the outside, they have an owner, they have a category, they have a geography, they have all kinds of extended attributes about that particular entity, but it's anchored with that universally ex, you know, mm -hmm. used unique mm -hmm. identifier in there. Mm -hmm. So if they didn't have that, they'd fall apart. If yeah, Uber yeah. didn't know everybody, every place, every <laughs> driver, what the times were and have all that structured data behind the scenes, when I hit my thumb, that yep. would show yep. up, right? So, yep. so you look at that and say, all right, there are people going into industries, financial services is a good one. There's a lot of them where they kind of come in from the data space. Right, or they have that data advantage because the legacy players not only are they legacy in their business model, they're legacy in their data. Data, their data yeah, isn't yeah. as well structured. Yeah, it's yeah. not as integratable, and those mm -hmm. that holds mm -hmm. companies back. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is that we we are uh, 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 what I call a lot of those companies who are born from data. You know, those are the types of companies who have literally understood their business and what kind of data they need to support it to um, improve the customer journey, to improve efficiencies internally, to understand what their customers want to buy. Why does it become so difficult, you know, for a lot of the legacy companies now, you know, and I, I hate to use the word yeah. legacy and I, and I, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a fan of such pathetic, um, uh, terms like data is the new oil and stuff like that. I just, find those really yeah. trivial and path you know <laughs> i'll use the word again pathetic i i i find that somebody said oh look data is the new oil you know whereas data data persists throughout an organization and the value of data whether it's old new still grows over time but oil doesn't i mean in terms of once it's in the engine it's used and it's you know kind of gone through the refining process 
that's it. it. It loses a lot of its value. So, you know, these kind of things irk me, as you can tell. And, um, you know, why are we still here? Why do you feel that we are still in, in this in this very much of a, we're just banding wonderful terms around, but not tackling the issues? People say to me, is data the new oil? I say, no, it's neither. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, I hate, I call that bad poetry. And I agree yeah. with you. We can yeah. do a whole separate, yeah. uh, oh, absolutely. A whole separate broadcast yeah. on just disassembling yeah. that ridiculous yes. phrase. Yes. But it comes, where's that come from? Yeah. So the intention of that, when somebody walks in, I saw a guy, a top leader in the big data space, mm -hmm. do a presentation with a pretty prestigious uh, conference. This was a week ago, two weeks ago. Right. And he started with the first most important thing is data is the new oil. And I couldn't help it. I had to like uh. write the chat. Like, no, it's not. It's like, Don't go. Like you have to have more imagination than that. Virtual heckling. Love it. The intent, right. Exactly. I'm that guy. But the intention is how do I explain it? Yeah. Right. The yeah. reason you say yeah. that is you believe, Oh, yes. everybody in the room is now going to get it. Well, they don't yeah, get it because that's yeah. bad poetry. It doesn't mm -hmm. work. The purpose mm -hmm. of a metaphor or a simile is mm -hmm. to make things clearer. And when you can sit there and debate, well, oil is a fossil fuel and data is not. And it's, is it, you spent more, if a metaphor takes you more time to explain it yeah, than it does to just not use it, then it's not an effective form of the correct. Yeah. So yeah. I'm in, there's a lot of reasons that data management stuff doesn't fail. There's a lack of ROI. There's mm -hmm. a lack of mm -hmm. alignment. There's business stakeholders. There's yep. too much focus on technology. There's, yep. it was always part of IT. And so IT went, the business owns the data and data and business went, I thought IT owns the data. And that seemed to go on for decades. Mm -hmm. um, but the part that I focus on is for sure the messaging. Yes. So the story around data management hasn't worked mm -hmm. and it was been focused on if it's sort of these glib pathetic you know and that encompasses a lot of areas in the data space yes these phrases you know yeah. there's a new oil there's a new whatever tofu bacon black avocado whatever, whatever it avocado, might be yeah. Yeah, yeah but also things like and this may be a little bit of you know a little bit of heresy here things like we need better data quality yes so yes. data quality is, is important yeah. Yeah. But data quality as a messaging hook doesn't work. No, it doesn't. The proof that it doesn't no. work is look at the mess we're in. Yes. They've been talking about yes. data quality for, for, for decades. decades. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you think you're going to march into the boardroom to get funding, and that's what yes. I try and do. I try yes. and help enterprises get funding for their data management so, activities. So, so that's a great so, point because I wanted to pick up on that a little bit later, but you've, you, you've come around to it, which is great. We'll talk about ROI and value in a minute, but it's the data quality. You know, I get asked that a lot of the time, you know, and, and, and how, do, how do you coach, advise um, people out there who, are, who say, we've got a data quality issue? Um, and I'm, I'm not talking about there's, a, there's, there's six rows here which have got, you know, uh, the customer name is wrong because we've got the, you know, we've, we've got the wrong spelling. And then the, the, the state is wrong because it actually is not the state that they live in because it doesn't match with the, 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 the zip code, um, et cetera, et cetera. That's not what a, a, a somebody at the boardroom or, you know, C-suite wants to hear. What do they want to hear? Yeah, they want to hear. So great question because that's the core of what I try and yeah. help people do. So yeah. First of all, before we go too far, anybody listening, data quality is important. Yeah. It's just not a good way to message it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm all about the story. How do you get a compelling narrative out there in your organization that gets you the business stakeholder engagement, that gets you C-level involvement, that gets you funding, that gets you support for this on an ongoing basis? You better have a good story to tell yeah. about yeah. why. So I'm yeah. much more around the why than the mm -hmm. how. Yes. And so yeah. if you think about these classic, the classic lexicon in the legacy data space is really unimaginative, right? It's mm -hmm. not very compelling. It's quality, cleanliness, <laughs> hygiene. Yeah. I mean, you want to walk into a room when you're trying to pitch against the marketing initiative yeah, and yeah. a sales initiative and, so and sexy. you're the hygiene guy. Yeah. Yeah. You like, might as well be talking yeah. about COVID-19 as the hygiene guy. Though. Yeah, it's, it just doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, the words aren't there. It doesn't matter. Really, no, so think not. about words like structure, yeah, like standards, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. interoperability, mm -hmm. like enabling scale. Yeah. So these aren't buzzwords. Yes. These are you improperly used. 
you know, if I have a minute with your CEO to talk about data quality, I'm not going to talk about quality. It's emotional. It's subjective. I'm going to talk yes. about, we don't, have a, we don't have a standardized, well-structured customer definition. Mm -hmm. Our hierarchies aren't totally stable. Our categorizations are missing. And meanwhile, the board is talking about transforming our customer experience. Yes. So, so, so what's the direct so, connection? There. Yeah. So, so you're, 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 you're taking that base idea around data quality and you're, you're, you're creating the relationship on that continuum to the value and the impact that it's going to have on the organization. I'm just so trying to pitch it better. Yeah. That's all I'm that's trying to do. That's essentially what you're saying. All, it's like, I don't touch any of those things. I don't yeah. do data modeling. I don't, you know, conceptual, logical, physical. I'm great at conceptual. I can get technically through logical, but I don't get physical. Physical. Okay. Touch anything. Yeah, yeah. But if you're going to try and capture somebody's imagination and you're going to try and do a pitch, which data storytelling is, don't mm -hmm. think it's any mm -hmm. other form of story than other than a pitch, right? You've got to secure a commitment from somebody to take action on something. Yeah. And in the case of data management, most of the time it's fund this, support this. That pitch has to be directed to what that company's trying to do mm -hmm. and showing mm -hmm. the tangible outcome of yeah. it. And so, so uh, hygiene, I, I you know, agree. Yeah, I hygiene absolutely agree with that because no one's going to really care about the hygiene factor around, you know, a bit of data that's lying in a database that's been resident. It's important. You got to have it. So again, absolutely. Those practitioners that, that's out there background not information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I get it. Know, keep so it the out of it. The data storytelling piece is, is, is of interest to me as well. What's your, so, so do you use a format? Do you use a technique? Do you use a, 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 a schematic as to how you deliver that when, when you're working with your clients? What, what is Yeah, I have, a, I, have a, I have a framework, so thanks for asking okay. that. And before I go yeah. into it, I want to differentiate data storytelling into two sections because data storytelling is the, probably the hottest technical thing, non-technical thing non -technical, going on in the database yes. today. It's yeah. predominantly focused on the analytics side. Yes. Telling stories with data. So I say there's another story to tell. It's called about your data. Mm -hmm. Why mm -hmm. data in, as a whole is important, why we need to manage it, why we need to own it, why we need to find the truth before we derive any meaning. And those two should go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So telling your data management story versus telling your data analytics story, I try and use this framework I call the three V's of okay. big, big storytelling. Okay, so good. I was, I was gets, happy you, know, you weren't going to say big data yeah. there for a moment. No, no. So, <laughs> I, you know, big data is V's. So there's up to like 47 of them now, right? Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. there's the mm -hmm. big data. So there's only hundreds, three. Hundreds, yeah, probably. Only three. Is yeah. there just as a, is there another topic? This is how ridiculous that whole space has become. <laughs> is there another topic that you have ever talked about academically where you're only allowed to describe it with words that begin with a single letter? Oh, I know. No, yeah, yeah, never. Yeah, it's like yeah. there's you know there's consultants out there looking in the yeah. dictionary under V and going, oh look, there's a good one. There's another one. Yeah, what yeah. Is that right? That works. <laughs> no, it's, it's ridiculous. So. Um, and I've had a chat with Doug Laney about this. The, you, you have? Know, the, the, the okay. Founder, and he's okay. agreed with me. He's like, yes. it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, volume, velocity, variety. He's a purist. He came up with it. Yep. He said they all, are, they all describe the attributes of big. Very much this. Yeah. So, yeah. and I get that. So I, you know, I admire his work in the, in the space because he's helped change the vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. going back to my three V's with, you know, kind of an honorific mm. uh, nod to to, to Doug's work, to Doug, they yeah. are vocabulary. That's the yeah. first one. Yeah. The words you use. Yep. Voice, how you talk and how you harmonize about what you're talking about. Okay. And then vision. Where's the company trying to go? Sure. So when you put the story together, you've got to have the right nomenclature. You've got to unite the, the messaging and propagate that messaging across your organization and have a common voice. And then it has to show how it enables the strategic intentions yeah. of your enterprise, mm -hmm. which is the vision part. So it's yes. not data management vision on its own. It's enabling where the company's trying to go. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. those three V's, again, vocabulary, voice, and vision is kind of the framework. And those are the exercises. What words do you use? Is it customer? Yeah. Is it client? Is it yeah. backs right into all the data management yeah. stuff? Yeah. Um, and it's a lot around the soft skills. You've got to so, develop soft skills. And so on. I, I think it's highly important. So I, I like those three because, you know, you, what, you've, what, what you've stated in those three words are what's in the English dictionary, you know? It, it's, it's vocabulary, voice, and vision. They're three explainable terms that have a specific um, definition behind them 
and it's absolutely clear what they mean. Whereas when you go into other areas and you start to use the buzzwords and the narrative starts to go down all these um, consultancy type speak or, you know, the, 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 the labels that we, you know, TLAs with three letter acronyms or, or four letter acronyms or whatever they are. I just, no one's going to get that. So I really do appreciate the fact that you've just used straightforward um, descriptive language that people will understand immediately. And I was having a chat with somebody called Paul Morley yesterday, who's coming on the show soon. And we were talking about language, which was absolutely, you know, great. So it sort of mixes in here and um, you know, how it's so important to convey a message that what you're saying in its most simplest terms, whether, and, and that actually brings about, as your hat says, the truth. So w- yeah. when, when you're working through these types of, changes in the narrative and the messaging what are some of the stumbling blocks in people's mindsets that they have to overcome that's an awesome question again so get do it in order right Mm. so so what vocabulary do you use Mm. what is the terminology and avoid this new stuff so if you're going to go talk to somebody you don't know or don't have a lot of interaction with about a topic that by definition they're not that fluent in You've got to use business accessible language. Yeah. And so coming in and talking about NoSQL and Python and R and, you know, these things that make their important techniques to know. Of course they are. But those are the what, those are the how. Yes. Right? It's all about the yes. how. Yeah. So you've got to use the language of the business. Mm-hmm. And another area, and I think this ends up being the important part, the vision part. There's a lot of work, I think, done. Data quality can be picked on again that way. Look, we increased our data quality from 62% to 73.9%, whatever that means. It's completely isolated. It has nothing, yes. It's not directly linking to a business. So understand where your business is going, which is mm-hmm. why I mm-hmm. boiled it down to how does your business deliver value to your relationship through your brands at yeah. scale? Yeah. Look at what that means. It could be... We're trying to transform our customer experience. It could be we're moving into e-commerce. It could be we want to change the nature of our business model and go from selling a widget to licensing the value of that widget as a service. Mm-hmm. That happens mm-hmm. a lot, especially mm-hmm. in the industrial space. Really exciting yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Find those opportunities. That's yeah. all those things. Are, yeah. The success of every one of those is inextricably linked to the successful uh, output of your data management work. Absolutely. So get in the room yeah. and yeah. say, you know, we don't have the data to back these ideas mm-hmm. up yet mm-hmm. because yeah. we got all these duplicates. It gets down yeah. to that really fundamental. We yeah. have the hierarchies that are screwed up. We got missing mm-hmm. segmentation. We don't have geographies. You know, it's yeah. like those four yeah. things, uh, which uh, I actually call the, three, the four C's of master. The data. four C's. Um, okay, here we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got back right into it. <laughs> Those four things are really fundamental to the structure yeah. of, of, of data that's used yeah. in an organization. Yeah. And so I try and help people peel away and say, look, there's mm-hmm. a direct link. You're not going to hear your CEO talk about they need better data quality. You are going to hear them talk about how we have to transform our customer experience. Yeah. And, and you know, you're absolutely right. I think there's something in there which people miss. And you touched upon it um, in, in, in that narrative there, which was whether it's 62% of a baseline that you've got in your data quality metric and you're now at 75.7%, um, nobody absolutely attaches that value into an overall KPI that is at a strategic level. Yeah. And you see, that's the breakage that we see in, in most, um, most organizations that, that literally are seeing a, you know, it's, it's, it's the data guys over there who are doing something which is, um, fundamental to the business, but we don't know what they're doing because they keep telling us we're moving from, you know, a percentage up a notch, etc. But how the hell does that impact me when I, yeah. so that, that's the bit which I, I take, which is very clear. It's a very clear message that you've just said that you've, you've got to have a, a link, uh, a, a, an anchor back to your strategic KPIs. And, and, you know, we're, we're working with several companies right now whereby, you know, and they want to get into data quality. They want to get into this thing around. And I said, well, you know, how are you going to track it? Oh, we'll get a baseline. What are you going to do with it? You know, if it's not attached to anything that runs and drives your business, then it's folly. You know, you'll be just looking at it and saying, it's a nice metric to, because we've 
we've gone up a percentage or, or whatever yeah. that might be. Yeah. Um, but let's get, let's get back to the, 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 the value piece. You know, um, you talked about value and asset. Um, how do we start to develop and bring um, data as an asset into companies? How do we start to really fire up why it needs to be on the balance sheet, why it needs to be something that we are focusing on primarily. What's, what are the top three reasons from your perspective? Yeah, and I'd look at sort of value. So yeah. the asset part is a metaphor to a great extent. You know, yeah. is it on the balance yeah. sheet? Is it? And again, Doug sure. Laney's done tremendous work sure. on that. Yeah, yeah. You know, him yeah. sort of prove that part. But yeah. why it has value. And the opportunity for data people out there, you know, I pick on our own group because I feel like there's opportunity that we are missing. This is, yeah. you know, I'm on their side. I'm on the data management side here. Sure. We can change the work that they do can change the nature of a business in ways that other departments cannot. So if you look at what data, what organizations are trying to do, one of three things, or they're doing these three things all the time. They're trying to grow the business. They're trying to improve the business. They're trying to protect it. Name a department that can do all three. There's only one in my view, yeah. the data yeah. department, however mm -hmm. you want to articulate. Mm -hmm. Right. So legal can protect, you know, finance can improve, sales Marketing and marketing can, can yeah. uh, you know, grow. Yeah. But uh, yeah. the, the they, they can't all do, you know, there's no one other department that can do all three. Mm -hmm. And then with a good, well mastered set of data, you can actually do yeah. all three the same data. Yeah. So there's really some opportunities there. And you know, how do you get that story out there? So there's you know, I think what you asked what's changed. Also, what's changed is the recognition organizationally of data through the personification of chief data officer of a sure. data department, whatever you yeah. want to call it. Yeah. But we all struggle in this space with continually, even your question, continually have to improve our existence. When will that stop? Yeah. You don't have marketing going in and saying, you know, marketing is the new oil. We need to have marketing. <laughs> now you can have bad marketing, but nobody's oh, questioning whether uh, you should have marketing. Yes, yes, so, of course. But there's lots of organizations. Yeah. Now, why do we need this data thing? So yeah. it's yeah. if we can get ourselves all aligned, and I'm not suggesting I'm, you know, hopefully I'm a voice in that at least. If you can start to get these stories aligned and point in the same direction around helping organizations understand that formally there should be, you know, data's got a seat at the table and however you personify that. And it's not an if anymore. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. we use it. It's yeah. you're not always defending yourself yes. um, or defending, you know, existentially your own reason for being. Being, yeah. yeah. That's the leap you can take. And the mm -hmm. companies that have done that have taken that leap, right? So sure. when you interview a lot of them, you talk to a lot of them, we both, you know, we're, we're, they're not questioning whether they need data anymore. They're just doing the same kinds of business inquiries around, okay, how much better can we leverage this? Just like yeah. you, how much better marketing can we yeah, do? Can, how can much we do? better sales can we align? Yeah. How much yeah. better? But they're not like, do we need this or not? And yeah. that, that narrative hopefully will change and go away. I, I hope so. so. I, I fundamentally hope so. I think there's a, there's, a, there's a piece in me that still feels that there's a part of this that has been played by the tech companies who are overselling tech to solve the problem. You know, put this widget in and in an instant you'll get insight. That never yeah. works. You yeah, know. it never works. And we're, you know, we're part of our own worst enemy. There's, there's yeah. infighting between data and analytics. Let's just yeah. start there. Yeah. So I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of going to shows and hearing conferences and having some analytics person stand up and say, without analytics, data is just a cost center. <laughs> It's just, you know, there's worthless. I mean, they say it with this kind of passion. It's like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. yeah Why does yeah. it have to be a zero-sum game here? No, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. on my yeah. side of it. You would never yeah. hear yeah. a baker stand mm -hmm. up and say, you know, that flour is worthless until I make it into bread. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that sounds stupid, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they yeah of respect course. respect the ingredient. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. And, we and have that. It this goes on yeah. today. Yeah. So, yeah. And if you think a business person walks in and here's the data, you know, here's this kind of slam from analytics and I'm, I'm emphasizing it for dramatic effect because I really mm -hmm. am reaching out to the data, mm -hmm. to the analytics community and mm -hmm. saying, you don't need to talk that way. Yeah. That tone, yeah. that voice yeah. doesn't help the greater mm -hmm. cause. I'm mm -hmm. really passionate mm -hmm. about it. So, mm -hmm. and, and I want to hear data management people stand up and, and defend their work too. Yeah. 
So yeah. when you hear about data scientists spending 60 to 90 to 120 percent of their time munging and wrangling, oh, go find out what that work yeah. is and how much of that work is unduplicating records, fixing mm -hmm. hierarchy, mm -hmm. finding segments. Mm -hmm. Not all of it is data management can be solved by data management, yeah. but I'm willing to bet. Yeah, a good large here, percentage should be. Yeah. yeah. It should be. So yeah. stand yeah. up for yourself. Your yeah. work has value. Go find those data scientists and yeah. say, what are you spending your time on? Let's fix what we can. Uh, and I think part of this. I think you're right. That narrative actually has been spoilt by this concept of a data scientist or a data engineer or, you know, a data analyst, because absolutely, you know, there were these people here before who were doing data warehousing or data modeling, or they were data analysts, you know, and, and, and I think it's just because people have said, oh, you know what, this thing over here is not working. So we'll, we'll give you something else. Yeah. Because yeah. it's going to give you some new improved you know, six to your million, point on, on, yeah. on, the, on the technology side, yeah. I absolutely agree yeah. with that. Now, I work for yeah. technology companies. I love tech. You know, you can't do it without technology, but there's always the new thing you don't have. And yes. That's a, you know, and that's in their, that's their objective. Yeah. But, you know, and I, and I pick on some of this terminology. So I don't know the technical background, but I saw, right, there was, there were data warehouse and there was a data lake and then somebody came up with a data lake house. And I'm I like, mean, I, I, it's, you know, it's, it's, you need a data lake house keeper yeah, yeah, yeah. after that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's not gonna, these aren't, I liken it to, I don't know if they have this ad in, in, in the UK or where you've been, but the, they have this, this pressure cooker grilling appliance. It's, okay. called, a nin, it's called a Ninja Foodie. Okay? Oh my goodness. I've and never that. watch any of these infomercials. And yeah. it's like, put this in and you just set it and forget it. You open it up and it's spectacular. And it hit me one day. I said, that's our technology pitch. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's. Forget that, your fry pan. Yes. Use yes. the Ninja Foodie <laughs> and you get it. If the ingredients aren't any good and you don't know how to cook. It's Doesn't not. Yeah. It's yeah. going to dazzle so you. Uh, yeah. 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 So that's, you know, really kind of like the analogy there. So yeah. you do need technology, but when you're always kind of leading people to sort of the next thing and they feel like it's out of their grasp, I try and bring them down to earth. And what people ask me, what's your advice? Start with what you got. How's yeah. that customer yeah. master? How's the vendor master? Yeah. How, you got to do the basic and, work. And actually, the, the value, and, and this is what I see, uh, you know, there's statistics out there, I don't know, from many different um, analysts, uh, in the analyst community, I should say, whereby, you know, we're hearing that companies are, are using probably less than 4 or 5% of their internal data. You know, so it's striking to me that, one, there is huge value and potential in internal data and to use it first. Secondly, why they aren't using it is beyond me because possibly for the same reasons that we're talking about now, you know, yeah. that they don't you can't have, operationalize any of yeah. those great ideas yeah. unless you've got and, that. And, that and then that hits the scale basis. So yeah. look, I think we're getting to the, the, this sort of, you know, winding down part. Tell me. I'm um, just getting wound up. Really, I'm ready to go for it. <laughs> part two. I know you are. No, I, I, I'm a great, great conversation. But I, I, I think for me, you know, um, th there's a couple of fundamentals around, around data management. But I just want to shift to one subject um, before we close, which is data literacy. Okay. Uh, what is your view? And I, you know, I, 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 I sort of still feel that data literacy is a it's a form of, uh, it's looking at the wrong areas. You know, it's not about the individual. It's not about the person who's looking at a bit of data and saying, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm not interpreting it this in the right way. I believe it's a back to the fundamentals again. I don't know what your, what your views are on data literacy in that. You know, I don't have a real deep view yeah, because it's yeah. not, you know, I don't consider myself sort of yeah. data literacy. Yeah, yeah, sure. But I get the concept, you know, yeah. should you be literate? Yeah. And even yeah. there, there's infighting there. Okay. Yes. You get these leaders go, well, we shouldn't call it literate because it's illiterate. It's like, yes. again, the bickering between yeah. us has got to stop yeah. because the business person looks at that and goes, even they can't agree. Why should yeah. they? Yeah. So whether yeah. it's reference data architecture or data literacy, you know, or data governance versus data enablement versus data management, all that terminology mm. mix mm. up. It's like, it's, you know, we got to dispense with it. Keep it for our own meetings, but don't expose No, no, it. no. Don't keep it for our meetings but either. Data literacy is a good thing. You know, Should you yeah. understand your data? I find it as a space focused almost entirely on analytics. So is mm. there a data literacy portion for the data management side? Yes. So it would be in a data story, let's say, which data literacy is aligned to, 
the plot comes from analytics, the characters of that story yep. come from data management. Mm -hmm. So understand those characters. What I mean by that is if you have a data story, a very simple one, sales are up in the Eastern region, right? And here's all the data behind that. So what's a sale? A sale is an interaction between a customer and a product. So those are the, that's what the, that's, those are the characters in that story, right? Yep. All these yep. customers yep. bought this product in this region, geography is defined mm -hmm. in, a, you know, in data management. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, data literacy as a, as a practice should include that terminology yeah being the fundamentals again fluent yeah. in yeah. you know what yeah. is essentially the business glossary asset so if yeah. you want to really get yeah down yeah, to yeah if you asset, want to get down to those yeah, yeah the fun yeah and and that's why so that's my kind of side piece here. yeah but as a concept yeah. you know, where it's done yeah. there's a lot of other folks who can rant mm -hmm. on that uh, okay but, so where where can folks find you where can they, they can find me on this? linkedin and they're yeah. constantly so <laughs> Scott Taylor is the data whisperer. If you Google me, you'll find me. I'm now I'm above the fold, which is lovely. Oh wow! You can also find me. So reach out there, follow me if you can. Um, and also, I've got a uh, uh, a pretty decent YouTube channel. I've got over 50 videos on there. I try and bring out this kind of, uh, in some cases, sort of fun, in some cases, very serious, but mm -hmm. always relatable, shareable sure. stuff that helps people. Yep. The only, its only purpose is to help you tell a better data story about why you need data management. Yep. So, yep. Um, subscribe to my YouTube uh, channel. Follow me on LinkedIn. I've got a website, which is not a lot going on there. Meta Meta Consulting—that's my okay. practice. Meta right. Meta. We're about what it's about. Yep. So, yep. Uh, we didn't talk about the metadata, but okay. And, uh, like Great. That, so. Excellent. Well, look, it's been an absolute pleasure having you yeah, on the show. Blast. I've really enjoyed our chat. <laughs> I love the outfit, and I'm I'm imagining a, a very large piano in front of you, so that you yes, start really playing cool. now for the rest of the day. Um, <laughs> it's my tip jar right here. Yeah, well. Okay, well, it's Beautiful. been fantastic. Have, awesome. a, have, have a perfect day. Take All care. Right. Bye. Cheers.